Welcome to the Cell Phone Retail Game, a fun, interactive way to learn about supply chains, their value, and the ways they impact our world. This game is designed to give you the real-world, real-time experience of managing a supply chain. From sourcing to selling, these concepts apply to every supply chain the world over. The object of the game is to accumulate the most money you can over the four to seven weeks that you play the game. Let's get started. First, we look at our product, the cell phone. Throughout this game, we will find a source and sell these phones, which are represented by tokens. We will order cell phones from suppliers and sell them in our retail store for a price of $5 per phone. Here are a few terms that we will use throughout this activity. First, when we refer to one week, we mean one round. You'll play multiple rounds today. Next, a unit is each phone that you buy or sell. Your revenue is the amount of money that you will make when you sell your phones. Each phone that you buy from your suppliers is recognized as inventory. The suppliers are makers of the cell phones. Demand is the number of phones that can be sold to customers. And last, and maybe most important, lead time is the amount of time that lapses between when an order is placed to when an order is delivered to a customer. Try to keep these terms in mind as you work through this activity. Let's talk about the different roles in this game. First, each team has three players, an accountant, a salesperson, and a purchaser. The accountant oversees picking your random demand at the beginning of each round and filling out the score sheet. The directions to fill this out are in the calculation hints section on the score sheet. Remember, game facilitators will be coming around to help you as needed. The salesperson is the money handler and collects revenue and pays any penalties incurred by the retail store. We'll talk about those penalties later. The purchasing role involves filling out the order forms and placing and picking up cell phone orders from the suppliers. Here are the rules of the game. Each team will begin the game with a budget of $100 and five units in their inventory, meaning five cell phones. Teams, be sure to check your supplies and make sure they are correct. If you look over at the retail store, you'll see there is a deck of cards on a placemat. The larger pile is the demand pile and contains the cards Ace, 1 through 10. At the beginning of each round, the team accountant will take the top card off the deck and bring it to your team. These represent your team's demand for cell phones. As we mentioned earlier, one of the duties of the salesperson is paying any penalties you may have at the end of the round. One of three scenarios may occur at the end of each round. One, if your team has fulfilled your random demand but has excess inventory at the end of the round, you'll be charged a penalty of $1 per unit in inventory. Two, if your team was not able to fulfill the demand, you will draw a card from the smaller pile at a retail store. This is the unmet demand pile. You will be charged a penalty for each unit of missed demand. The penalty, if you draw a jack, is $1 per unit. For a queen, it is $2 per unit. For a king, it is $3 per unit. And if it is a joker, it is $4 per unit. The penalties symbolize how being out of stock affects different customers in different ways. Sometimes missed demand may just mean a missed sales opportunity. At other times, it can mean the loss of a customer for future sales. The third end of round scenario is when your team successfully fulfills the demand with no excess inventory. If this happens, there is no penalty. If you look to the other side of the room, you will see your three suppliers. Pay attention to each of the supplier's variables, as this will be very important in planning your orders. First, supplier A is in Midland, Michigan, and represents a local supplier. It has a capacity of 10 units per week, at a cost of $4 per unit. It is the most expensive option, but has a lead time of zero weeks. In other words, when ordering from supplier A, you will be able to take your supply within the week that you ordered it. Supplier B is a little further away, in Chicago, and represents a national supplier. Its weekly capacity is 15 units at $3 per unit, but when ordering from here, you must wait one week to receive your supply. Supplier C is in Shanghai, China and represents an international supplier. Here, the weekly capacity is 30 units at $1 per unit. While China is the cheapest supplier, it has a two-week lead time. Also, the minimum amount that your team can order at a time is 10 units. Remember, the object of the game is to accumulate the most money you can within the four to seven weeks that you play the game. Remember to use the different supplier variables to your advantage. In supply chain management, strategic planning is just as important as strategic purchasing. Now that you know the basics of the game, let's try a couple of practice rounds. 
We will fill in the score sheet together. Facilitators, please pause the video between each step so we can keep everyone moving at the same pace. For the first round, we will work with supplier B and assume that it has unlimited capacity. Also, each team will have the same demand and penalty cards. So let's get started. First, have a student accountant pick your random demand for the week. Again, this is located at the retail store. Remember, at the beginning of each week, each team will receive five cell phones in inventory and $100 in cash. This week's demand is seven units. Mark a seven in the second row of your scorecard. The team now decides how many cell phones they want to purchase. This week, we will purchase five units from supplier B in anticipation of future demand. Now the accountant completes the rest of the score sheet. Next, it is the purchaser's job to fill out the order form and place the order with the supplier. This is also the time to pick up any orders you may have ordered in the past couple of weeks. Since you're ordering from supplier B, each phone you order is $3. Therefore, you should take $15 with you when you go to the supplier. Again, Chicago has a lead time of one week. You will not receive your order until next week, which means the next round we play. Now, it's time to make some money. The salesperson from each team can now go trade in their phones for cash. Because the demand this round was seven, and you only have five phones to sell, you must sell all your phones. Each phone sells at a retail price of $5, so you should receive $25 from the retail store. The accountant can now fill out rows 8 through 13 on their score sheet. Since we were unable to fulfill two units of demand, we must pick a missed demand penalty card. In this case, let's pretend we picked a queen. The queen penalty is $2. The salesperson must now go back and pay the penalty to the retail store. In this case, since there was two units of missed demand, the total cost is $4. Once all the cell phones are sold and the penalties are assessed, the week is over. The accountant can now fill out rows 14 through 19. Now, let's try another round. For this round, you can use either supplier A or B. Each team can also pick their own demand and penalty cards. Your instructor will tell you which team should go first. First, go get your demand card from the retail store. Now, if you choose to order this week, fill out your order form and take it to your supplier. You can also pick up any orders that you had from the previous week. Now, sell your phones to the retail store. If you must pay an excess inventory or miss demand penalty, do this now. You can now total up your score sheet. Once everyone is finished, the facilitators will collect the scores and will be ready for the next round. Those are the basics of the game. Now that you know the rules, it's time for you and your team to try and accumulate the most cash and win the game. This game requires strategic thinking, so work with your team to identify the best strategy for you and get started. Good luck and have fun!